Airdrop farming can be super overwhelming. It seems like every day there's a new 10 airdrop opportunities which crop up out of nowhere and it's very easy for you to divert or lose your attention as these new opportunities come up. So in today's video, I want to break down the core airdrops that I think are absolutely essential that every airdrop farmer should be farming in Q1 2024. I'm not going to cover every single airdrop in today's video, but instead, I'm going to be covering the airdrops, which are the pillar of my personal airdrop farming portfolio. Obviously, in recent times, we've had some major airdrops like Starknet, Jupiter, Dimension, but these are now in the past, and now it's time to move on to greener pastures and focus on some of the key airdrop opportunities which are in front of us. So in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down these five airdrop opportunities and telling you exactly how you can qualify. By the way, before we get into the show, I want to thank everybody that subscribed to the channel over the last couple of weeks. We've had some amazing growth and actually you can see here that almost 50% of the people that watch these videos are subscribed to the channel. So if you aren't subscribed already and you're watching this video, click the subscribe button because I really would love to see this number tick over to 50%. We're so, so close. And I just want to thank everyone for supporting and watching the content. Your support has been absolutely amazing. And I'm doing daily uploads at the moment to give you the best crypto alpha every single day, whether that be new airdrop guides and opportunities, altcoin trades, my general thoughts on the market and more. My goal is to help you succeed in what is a crazy market in 2024 and hopefully we can all come out the other side of this year significantly better for it. So without further ado, let's get into what you came to this video for, which is of course the airdrop opportunities. Now over the last few weeks, we've seen some major, major airdrops. We've seen Jupiter launch at over a $5 billion FDV, which is absolutely insane. We've obviously seen the Celestia airdrop end up performing really, really well for people that were lucky enough to qualify. Obviously, if you were following my content in 2022, actually, when I was talking about Celestia on Twitter, you should have gotten an airdrop. I was saying that getting into the node sale could be a good idea. And of course, those participants ended up getting some nice Celestia bags. We've also had Dimension. We've had Starknet actually they just launched their token today, which has, I mean, launched it over a $30 billion FDV, which is pretty insane. The airdrop distribution here wasn't ideal in my opinion. I mean, some people still made a decent airdrop, but I think it could have been a little bit more generous considering the size and magnitude of Starknet. Uh, we also had Wormhole as well announce their tokenomics. And unfortunately, or fortunately, if you have been airdrop farming, the snapshot for this airdrop has now officially been taken. So no more Wormhole farming. It's time to move on to other interoperability protocols, two of which I'm going to talk about later in today's video if you did miss the wormhole airdrop. If you've been following my airdrop guides, you should have had a window uh, to get involved with wormhole, and I think this will end up being a pretty decent airdrop considering that they are distributing 17% of the token supply to the community as you can see here. And recently, there have been some other major airdrops. You can see in front of you the list of the biggest airdrops in 2023. Of course, Arbitrum, Celestia. And kicking off this year, we've had Jitto, Pyth, Jupiter, Dimension, as I mentioned before. So many airdrops kicking off the year, but I still think 2024 has a lot more in store for it when it comes to airdrop farming. And I believe that the ones that are fading airdrop farming, uh, just maybe because the Starkton airdrop wasn't as big as I would have liked, are going to end up regretting it because there are some absolutely massive airdrops still yet to come. In fact, the biggest airdrops of the year have not landed yet. And I'm going to talk about them in today's video. But of course, today's video is going to focus on the ones that you can still qualify for. And the ones that I think still give you the biggest opportunity to qualify and receive a sizable airdrop. So as I said earlier, this is really giving you the pillars of my airdrop farming portfolio. And of course, I'm farming over 20 airdrops. And some of you that are really experienced airdrop farmers might be farming 20, 30, 50 tokens at once. You can see in front of you the list of tokenless protocols on DeFi Llama keeps growing and growing growing and growing. Alpha tip, by the way, if you want to search for new airdrop opportunities, DeFi Llama is absolutely amazing. But this is super overwhelming. Look at the amount of new projects without a token. It's absolutely overwhelming. So that's why today I'm going to take it back to basics and give you the essential airdrops 
that you can't afford to miss in 2024. Because although it would be amazing if we had unlimited time in the day, unfortunately we don't as we know all too well. So you do have to be a little bit selective and especially those that are under time pressure. Maybe you have study, maybe you have a job, maybe you're not full-time crypto. In fact, most of you probably aren't full-time crypto um, and you have limited time to invest in the market. So this video I think is going to appeal to you because it's going to condense it down nicely into five airdrops. But of course there are more airdrops on farming. This video is more so if I only had to pick five based on a variety of factors. So airdrop size, time pressure in terms of where the onus is for airdrop farming and opportunity, these are the airdrops that I would pick. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. The first one is Polyhedra. So if you missed the wormhole airdrop or if you haven't been farming layer zero for the past couple of years, I think I started talking about it in mid-2022, which is absolutely crazy. We're almost two years later. I think Polyhedra is still a great one to farm. Now, it's similar to Wormhole in the sense that it is an interoperability protocol, which powers a lot of bridges and cross-chain dApps. And they do have big backers and a significant valuation having investors on their cap table, such as Polychain, Hashkey, OKX, Binance, Labs actually led their strategic round alongside Anamoka Brands. So clearly, Polyhedra has a lot of hype behind it uh, and I believe they've built an amazing product and as you airdrop farm you'll realize just how cool the product is I think as well. So how can you qualify for a polyhedra airdrop? Well firstly the ZK bridge I believe is the first place to start so if you click onto the website and I'm going to leave relevant links in the description and click on token ZK bridge it's going to bring you to a bridge that enables you to bridge across a variety of chains mostly layer two chains that enable you to essentially build up some bridging volume so I think the number one requirement here and this is similar to my thesis for other interoperability protocols like layer zero is making sure you're building up consistent bridging volume over time and of course the more volume that you can bridge the better now when it comes to bridging on some of these chains, especially if you're not using Ethereum and you're using some of the cheaper layer twos and a linear recently reduced gas fees, you're not actually going to be spending much money per se, uh, but you will have to have obviously some funds that you can transfer across. So you can use USDT if you don't want market risk and all you need to do essentially is bridge across from one of these chains and back and start building up some bridging history. And you can actually track your history. I've created a new wallet for the purpose of this video. Uh, but once you start building up some history, you will be able to actually see your past data and you can start to add up in an Excel spreadsheet the amount of bridging volume and on which dates you built up volumes. So this is absolutely amazing. So that's obviously the first thing you can do. Working our way across the website, I am trying to hit every single uh, possible thing I can do on Polyhedra to make sure I don't miss anything. So the next thing that you can do is import an NFT or you can also redeem or claim an NFT on the blockchain. So basically you want to select your blockchain, you want to enter the contract address of an NFT and you, you can actually even create your own NFT which is another thing that you can do which is pretty cool. Of course you have to pay gas to mint an NFT but it's one more thing that you can do. I would recommend doing every single possible thing uh, that you can on the chain and if that means minting an NFT why not go and mint an NFT. Although I think bridging and in ecosystem interaction is going to be more important why not? If something is there for you available to do, and this is a general airdrop rule I have, why not take that opportunity? Another thing they have is a messenger. You can basically send a message across networks to from one wallet to another wallet. So you can literally type in what you want. So hi, <laughs> and you can send that message across any of these chains. That's one more thing that you can do. They also have their OP BNB ZK bridge. So if you want to vary the type of transactions that you are doing, you can use the BNB bridge as well. I don't know how much it matters necessarily bridging with the token bridge versus the BNB bridge, but I'm doing both just to be safe. And if you click on ecosystem, this is really cool. Uh, you can actually see the other protocols that are in the ecosystem. And this is where you have the ability to interact with additional protocols that are utilizing Polyhedra tech. So as you can see, there are ecosystem campaigns which utilize the ZK bridge and they also have a galaxy campaign. And what I always recommend doing with projects is taking part in these campaigns and initiatives. We saw with Manta Network, for example, that the Galaxy users actually received a very nice airdrop. So what you can do is you can go onto galaxy.com, search up Polyhedra Network. They've got over 400,000 followers and actually complete some of these Galaxy tasks. There's a lot that you can do. You can follow them on Twitter. You can join the Discord, become a Polyhedra OG and claim that badge. Then you've got a bunch of other initiatives that you can complete as well. 
Once again, like the NFTs, it's available, so why not do it? Now, something else I'm trying to do with Polyhedra is not only build up volume on their own bridge, I'm also trying to build up volume on integrations of their bridge in other protocols like Merkley. So if you go onto Merkley, you can see here that you can use the Polyhedra bridge, their gas refuel function to refuel or transfer gas across a multitude of chains. And there's something really, really, really cool about this. Look at this at the bottom here. Layer zero and Polyhedra are both powering this bridge. Now, why is this amazing? Well, you're killing two birds with one stone. Spoiler alert, I'm about to get into the layer zero airdrop because this is another airdrop on my list of five. And one way that you can qualify for both, or at least get some transactions in for both, is utilizing a protocol like Merkley, which is integrating both forms of technology because they both utilize ZK proofs in order to initiate these cross-chain transfers. So that is obviously something that you can do as well to kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. Now in the description below, I'm gonna leave any resources I think will be of value to you. One of the threads that I think contextualizes these steps quite nicely is Hitaro's thread. I was searching across Twitter for the best threads because I wanted you to have some guides and this was the best one that I found. It goes through some of the steps that I mentioned with also video guides for things like creating NFTs that I don't have time to get into in this specific video as well as how to bridge etc. So this was an absolutely amazing thread. I'm going to leave it in the description below for those that want some more information on Polyhedra. But that's definitely one of the top airdrops that I'm currently farming. Now Next, let's get into layer zero, because clearly when we talk about interoperability, layer zero is pretty much the king alongside Wormhole. And this should be, if they play their cards right, unlike StarkNet, one of the biggest airdrops of 2024. And it's one that I'm super excited about. Now, I don't really need to go too much into layer zero for the OG watchers of this channel or my Twitter, because I've been harping on about this airdrop for almost two years now, which I'm, I'm kind of getting sick of talking about layer zero, but I will give you some of the latest developments uh, in addition to Merkley in terms of what I'm doing in terms of farming. So as you can see, clearly stacked cap table. We don't need to get into this anymore. $3 billion valuation they raised at. I mean, if StockNet's a $33 billion protocol, then layer zero is a $30 billion protocol. It's going to be absolutely massive. Look, I don't know if it'll be exactly $30 billion, but it's definitely going to be in that $10 plus billion range, which means Pretty big airdrop and probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest of 2024. So what are some of the things that you can do right now to qualify for layer zero? Well, interestingly, my steps haven't really changed that much in the last year. Now, every now and then we get a new bridge come out, a new DAP come out, a new integration come out, and I like to play around with it. But interestingly, many of the steps in my original guide are still true today. Interacting with Stargate has been a mainstay of my airdrop farming for the last year and a half. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm holding STG and I'm voting on governance proposals, CC2, who I think is the king of airdrops on Twitter, reminds people that they need to be voting on these Stargate proposals. And the interesting thing is that this proposal is between Aptos and Layer Zero. Now, Aptos isn't in this video, but they are doing their second round of airdrop very soon. It's also an airdrop on farming, but I tried to condense my um, airdrops into my top five for the purpose of this video. But this is interesting because it's kind of one of those, you know, two birds, one stone scenarios, again, with a bit of interaction across Aptos and Layer Zero. So StarkNet is something that I'm certainly utilizing, not just voting on governance proposals with STG, because I understand not all of you are going to want underlying token exposure, and that's okay. Something else I'm doing is, of course, utilizing the Stargate Bridge. It's the primary and original DAP on Layer 0. I would be shocked if Stargate interaction doesn't end up being on the snapshot. And this is simple. You just need to swap tokens. Once again, you can use stable coins. Okay, you're paying a bit of gas. That's, you're going to end up chewing through gas when you airdrop farm, right? But you're not giving up your money. It's still your USDT. It's still your Ethereum. But you are using it. You're activating it, essentially, and paying some gas on it. And you're switching between any of the networks that you would like to switch on. You can stick to the low gas chains. I doubt they're going to scrutinize and be like, oh, you know, you were using a chain and you paid half the gas versus the people that used Ethereum. No, I think generally just using a variety of chains is, is okay. And you can go with the lower gas fee chains for sure. So build up some bridging volume once again, like Polyhedra. Be consistent and build it up over time. If you've been watching my airdrop shows, you know what I love to do. I love to have that Excel spreadsheet whenever I am farming airdrops. And I'm, I apologize because I never actually did share my template with you. This is something I still want to do. I just completely slipped my mind. I'm actually reminding myself now uh, that this would make an amazing future video. But to give you the TLDR, basically what I do is I have uh, tabs down the bottom of every single airdrop that I'm farming. So Polyhedra, Layer Zero, 
the next few I'm going to talk about in today's video, Aptos, etc., Solana airdrops. And I basically have a checklist that I tick off every single week, which might be like bridge 10 Ethereum from BNB to Optimism, stake funds in X pool, swap between X asset and X asset. And I'll basically check this list off every single week and I'll pick a time once a week, let's say one to two hours where I just sit down and I go through all of my airdrops. Now, obviously the more airdrops you're farming, the longer it's going to take. If you're farming five airdrops, you probably only need two hours a week. If you're farming 30 airdrops, you might need to press buttons all week like a maniac. It really just depends how much time you have, but the key with airdrop farming is to be consistent. So if you can find that hour or two every single week to sit down, tick off those boxes in your checklist for each airdrop, that is definitely the way to go. And it's the exact same thing when it comes to ticking off layer zero, ticking off polyhedra. I'm just consistent with my bridging. And over time, I think this is going to end up paying off because we have seen previous airdrop snapshots really reward that consistency and really reward that volume, right? And you can't get that volume just for two weeks of airdrop farming. The people that have the significant volume are A, the whales, but B, the retail that were consistently doing it and they had enough time, enough leeway to build up volume because the layer zero snapshot might not be for another few months, let's say. But the people that started a year ago, that they have a significant advantage because they got to do more. Now, I don't believe it's too late, but you seriously better start building up some volume if you do want to get something like a layer zero. Now, what else am I doing on layer zero aside from Stargate and Merkley? Sushi swap or any dApp for that matter that enables swapping multi-chain via layer zero, so like Sushi X, is one way to build up volume. You can see here that layer zero is an official partner to facilitate multi-chain swapping. There are other dApps as well in the ecosystem. Radiant Capital, one that I've talked about many times before, also utilizes layer zero tech. Mugen Finance is a real yield protocol built on layer zero. This is also a dApp you can interact with. Tapioca is an omni-chain borrowing and lending platform that also utilizes layer zero tech similar to Radiant. So all those applications, in my opinion, are very decent applications to interact with to tick off some of the additional requirements. So you don't just want bridging volume, you also want swapping volume. You want to be interacting with multiple dApps in the ecosystem. Just be diverse with it. And as I said, on that checklist, just write down all these dApps. Uh, deposit X amount of collateral into Radiant. Swap X amount on SushiSwap. Bridge X amount on the Aptos bridge, as you can see in front of you, which is another bridge utilizing layer zero tech. So this is another bridge that I use alongside Stargate and alongside Merkley as well. It's basically from the Aptos blockchain across to other EVM compatible chains. Potom Network also utilizes layer zero tech. They have their wallet, but I think the most interesting and compelling thing here is LiquidSwap, which is a DEX that is built on Aptos, but utilizes layer zero technology to enable that cross chain element. So you can also use this one if you want to play around on the network. So that is what I'm doing on layer zero. Once again, I'll also leave what I think is the best guide in the description below. But I think those are the major components. Of course, there are many other applications that utilize the tech, but I don't think you need to use all of them. You just need to be varied in, in your approach. Bridging volume, I still think will be the major thing though. Swapping volume, anything else you can do in the ecosystem is a major, major plus as well. Now let's get on to one of the airdrops that I believe is going to be one of the biggest airdrops of 2024. Now this isn't probably going to be until later in the year, but that's an amazing thing because it means you still have time to qualify. And by the way, the last airdrop that I'm going to mention in today's video, I believe is super underrated. And I'm not seeing many people farm it, but it's going to be very, very important for a very key airdrop ecosystem. So the airdrop that I believe could be one of the biggest of the year is Linear. Linear is, of course, consensus major L2, which utilizes ZK tech. And based on what I've seen technology-wise, it looks like one of the best launches of 2024. And I think it's also going to launch at a fairly high valuation. And of course, this is great for airdrop farming because the higher the valuation, typically the bigger the airdrop because what the project will do is they'll pick a percentage of the token allocation that they want to airdrop so obviously the bigger the token the larger dollar amount per user the amount of users don't change but the valuation distributed amongst those users may so what can you do on linear well linear unlike many of the other airdrops that i'm talking about today is one of the more straightforward airdrops to farm because they literally spell out the xp system right in front of you via the linear voyage campaign now, what this is, is it's a campaign where pretty much every single week they're launching new initiatives for you to take part in to earn XP. So it's basically festivals, quests, workshops, all happening on chain to enable you to earn XP. Now, if you've been completing these quests, 
from the beginning, because I started talking about Linear Voyage last year when it first started, you'd be in a really, really strong position because you would pretty much be on max XP right now. And the more XP, the bigger the airdrop is going to be. If you haven't though, you are watching it a good time because right now, I think when the video goes live, it should be out, is a brand new initiative called Linear Park. As you can see, there are a few other pending initiatives that you can take part in to earn XP, but by far, the best and the biggest new one is basically a Web3 gaming adventure for you to earn XP. So right now, this is the best thing you can do for qualifying for an airdrop. So if you are late to Lydia and you haven't done anything, this would be a good place to start. Now you have to accept that you're not going to get as big of an airdrop as the people that started last year when I was first talking about it. But that's okay, because we still probably have many, many months of these quests and initiatives, so you can start building up XP now. So what is Linear Park? Linear Park is basically a variety of initiatives across the Web3 gaming space on Linear, which enables you to interact with these dApps for earning XP. Linear Park is basically like a theme park with 10 distinct zones that enable you to immerse yourself uh, in the ecosystem. So if you go onto Layer 3, I'm going to leave a link in the description below that you can use to access Linear Park. You can see Linear Park's here. If you click on that button, you'll get access to the theme park. And there are basically different zones which unlock as the weeks of the campaign go on. It's a six-week campaign that essentially enable you to interact with various dApps across each specific subsector of gaming. So week one is going to be RPG and MMO games. Week two, action and strategy. Week three, social world. Week four, experience the East. Week five, mini game gala. Week six, NFT land. And of course... The more of these quests that you're able to complete, the more XP that you're going to earn. And keep in mind, you are going to need to use Layer 3 to qualify for the XP. It's the only official host of Linear Park. So I will leave a link in the description below if you want to do it directly. Um, I would recommend you don't have to use that link. You can also look it up yourself. But I would recommend you do use either that link or the link in Linear's official website because there are a lot of scam links going around. So you have to be very careful what link you actually choose to use. If I'm 99% sure the link's in the description for you guys by the time you're watching, but those viewers that are really early, like within the first couple of hours, there's a chance it's not there yet. And you'll just need to check in a couple hours later because Linear Park at the time of recording isn't live. I'm recording this video as it's supposed to be going live. So hopefully by the end of the video, it is live and then you can start. And this is one of those examples where the people that have the post notification bell turned on are the big winners here because you're getting in super early and you're pretty much guaranteed that you're not going to miss the week one of XP um, because I'm, I actually delayed this video just so I could put this in the video because uh, I wouldn't, how can I talk about linear without, you know, the biggest next part of their voyage not being shown on the video. It doesn't make sense. So I'll leave a link in the description to Linear Park and the details if you want to learn more about it. On top of that, I'm also interacting with Linear DApps specifically. So I think XP will be the number one component of the airdrop, but there are also some interesting applications on Linear, which also have their own initiatives, plus could help towards a Linear airdrop. One of them is Linex. Linex is the native liquidity layer of Linear. And basically what you can do here is you can supply liquidity to their pools by pairing your tokens, and you can earn a yield on those tokens. You can also swap if you want to do any native swapping on Linear to build up some swap volume, you can utilize uh, their swap function as well. And they are the liquidity layer of Linear, so they should have the strongest liquidity, especially, I mean, they pretty much just launched, so especially after more people start to get involved. One other thing you can do is if you have their native governance token, which is LYNX, you can turn that into VE LYNX to earn and govern the platform. So it's basically the governance token of the platform. You will also earn bribes and trading fees for locking up your VE LYNX, which enables governance holders to have a stake of the platform essentially via profit sharing. And it's actually very cool uh, just as a user of Linear. When, when I first started using the chain basically last year, there wasn't much to do. The Galaxy campaigns were super simple. It was basically like follow them, join the Discord, Twitter, etc. But seeing over time the ecosystem develop, seeing these new dApps come onto the chain, seeing now applications like Linux start to launch and more quality dApps and games like we're going to get to test out during Linear Park, it's super, super awesome to see the ecosystem develop. And I still think it's at its early stages. So I actually think these new chains have big opportunities on them, not just in terms of airdrop farming, but also spotting and identifying the top new protocols launching on these chains. Because you have to remember what an airdrop is. In crypto, an airdrop 
to an ecosystem is essentially stimulus. You're stimulating the usage and activity on the network, but you're also giving people access via an airdrop to liquidity on the network. And that liquidity needs to go somewhere, right? So I'm always on the lookout for new applications that are launching on new chains, because this is often where some of the bigger opportunities lie. And we've seen the same thing across Starknet now that it's launching some of the top applications there. Uh, look really good. ZK Sync has had some amazing performers. It's not even launched yet. So that stimulus effect hasn't really kicked into gear, but just the additional network activity has been a major plus for new applications on the chain. All right, so that is three of my five top airdrop ecosystems that I am currently airdrop farming. I've left two of the biggest ones for last, and there's actually a bonus airdrop in here uh, that I think is, is quite a good one that's being underrated as well that I want to talk about. So of course, ZK Sync is the penultimate major ecosystem. I mean, this is one like Layer Zero that I've talked about so much in the past. I'm kind of getting sick of it, but I mean, you, you really can't deny it. They've raised 458 million, Dragonfly, A16Z, OKX, major, major, major backers for ZK Sync. And it's going to be one of, if not the biggest airdrops of 2024. I know I said that about Layer Zero, but it is neck and neck because we don't know the distribution yet. ZK Sync could very well end up being on top by the end of the year. Linear as well. I mean, it's going to be a close race. It depends which ecosystem decides percentage-wise to airdrop more. But we know for a fact that these three are going to be three of the biggest, if not the biggest, of the year. So if you thought Starknet was big, if you thought Jupiter was big, if you think Wormhole is going to be big, I don't think we've seen anything yet compared to what some of these are going to do. So for ZK Sync, one of the most recent guides that I thought was really good was Wrecked Fences Guide. Of course, I have my own guides, but he's updated it with a few newer protocols. Basically, my strategy for ZK Sync is interacting with some of the major protocols, namely the DEXs on the ecosystem. So you've got SyncSwap, you've got MuteSwap, Azumi Finance, Mav Protocol, some of the major applications, and also utilizing other types of apps. So not just DEXs, but lending protocols, for example, ZeroLend. Now, ZeroLend is an interesting one because not only do they help potentially help you qualify for a ZK Sync airdrop, but... They also have their own token, which hasn't launched yet, uh, that you can airdrop farm via interacting. So it's another one of these two birds, one stone scenarios where you can get access to two airdrops through one protocol, which I love because it makes my airdrop farming so much more efficient. Now, Zero Lens pretty crazy because they, I mean, let's look at the TVL. It's nuts. Their total market size is now $136 million and it keeps growing and growing and growing. It's absolutely insane to see the growth of their protocol. And they've actually built a really good protocol. So you have an opportunity right now to complete their zero gravity campaign. And this is going to enable you to earn points to qualify for an airdrop. They have a leaderboard. Now, when a project has a leaderboard, that's a very strong sign that they are going to have an airdrop. So zero lend, basically what you can do once you sign up for zero gravity, and I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to access it, is join their discord, say good morning in the discord, supply some collateral to their lending market, borrow assets from their lending market, refer another user, and stake pith and what you can do is once you've connected your wallet you actually earn points as you can see here you earn different points based on for example how much tvl you contribute or you earn a static amount of points just for joining the discord so you can actually get 100 points just for joining a discord it's so simple and zero lend airdrop especially the higher the tvl on the platform goes the bigger it gets because this will likely positively impact its market cap upon launch so zero lend is as i said good because you're interacting with a protocol that has its own airdrop but you're also interacting with an ecosystem zk sync that also has an airdrop so you can use my link in the description below if you want to access the zero gravity campaign and i think this is going to be a really strong one for building up points which are going to contribute towards a zero lend airdrop and for the ones that are willing to deposit at least a hundred dollars um and you're not just like losing your money it's a lending protocol right so you're providing liquidity as collateral to borrow an asset and you can keep your ltv super low so you're not taking up too much risk you guys are going to be able to earn a lot more points because it's essentially one point per usd per day so you get a hundred points per day for staking a hundred dollars if you do a thousand dollars you get a thousand points per day so obviously the ones that watch this video and do it soon are going to be able to build up more points over the duration of the gravity campaign than you would if you're watching this video in a couple weeks and once again this is why Mars Deutscher followers with the notification bell turned on are always going to be in a better position. Sorry, another shameless notification shill. Uh, but it's true. Like, sometimes these airdrop opportunities are relatively time sensitive. I mean, that is the nature of airdrop farming, right? Um, so everyone that's watching this video as soon as it comes out, you're going to have a head start on people that are watching later because you're going to be able to build up more 
points. You don't just need to supply collateral, you can also borrow assets. If you supply and borrow, you're earning so much more points than if you just do one or the other. But interestingly, the borrow market gives you four times the amount of points than actually supplying liquidity, which makes sense, right? Because supplying USDT, you're taking on less risk than borrowing um, assets. So you can see here that there's a bunch of assets. You can do stable coins if you want to be more risk off. There's also native tokens in the ecosystem like Mute if you want to be more risk on. And they all come with their own supply and borrow APRs for you to earn yield on top of your airdrop farming. So that is something that you can do now using the link in the description if you want to potentially qualify for a zero airdrop alongside a ZK Sync airdrop. And the final airdrop I have to talk about today is Scroll. I'm not going to go too much into it, but this is another major ecosystem, which is probably going to have a large airdrop. I'm going to leave a link to the best guide that I found in the description below, but it's pretty much, spoiler alert, using major bridges like Orbiter Finance, Al2 Finance, using the Scroll official bridge, etc., to build up bridging volume. I won't go too much into it because I've given you more specifics on other airdrops, but... Scroll is another one that is in probably my top 10, but for the sake of this video, just based on the criteria I explained before, like size and opportunity, my top five for airdrops in Q1. Now, there are some airdrops which I think are amazing that didn't make this list. Why? Well, firstly, I had to be concise and kind of cram it down into, into five of my top airdrops. Of course, I'll give you different types and varying types of airdrop opportunities in future videos. But the other thing is these... Not all of them, because linear might be later in the year, but most of them are time sensitive in the sense that you need to be interacting now to actually have time to build up that volume, linear included. Um, ZK Sync and Layer Zero, there's probably more of a premium time-wise on those ecosystems. Scroll, I think, would happen slightly later in the year. But all of these, I mean, there's so much stuff you can be doing now to put yourself in a good position to receive an airdrop versus waiting. So that's kind of why I chose these airdrops over some other ones, which although they may be great, they're probably 2025 or looking a bit later down the timeline. So that's why I picked the airdrops in today's video. And if I had to prioritize one in today's video, it would probably be linear because Park just launched. So that gives you something to do. Probably Layer Zero as well. Um, I mean, all of these are a priority, but I'm trying to like order them for you. Layer zero as well, because I think you're probably running out of time there. And, and then I would say ZK Sync slash Zero Lend. Um, obviously with gravity starting, you can earn more points now versus waiting. And ZK Sync's another one that I don't think they've done their snapshot yet, but time is ticking on that ecosystem. Oh, and for full disclosure, I am an early investor in Linux on Linear, as well as Zero Lend. I always want to be transparent. When I'm an investor in a tokenless protocol, I believe that's super important to do with my audience. And I'm super happy to be supporting these protocols because I believe they're market leaders on both chains across Linear and ZK Sync. So there is a lot to like there in my opinion. So that sums up my top five airdrops. Let me know in the comments which five airdrops you are farming. If I sounded croaky in today's video, it's because I'm actually very sick. My throat is like all swollen, but... Uh, I'm trying to pop out these daily uploads. It really is a grind, but um, I honestly love doing this. I love making content, especially in this market. And I really, really, really do want all of us to succeed this year. It's kind of boring making money alone. It's so much more fun when we can all do it together. So I'm really trying to bring you guys on this journey as well. And hopefully when we celebrate these airdrops and our big wins, we can all do it together as a community, which would be absolutely amazing. If you haven't joined the community yet, make sure to join by clicking the subscribe button. I'll leave all the relevant links to get involved in any of the airdrops that I talked about in today's video in the description for your convenience. If like Linear Park isn't out yet, I'll add it as soon as it's live. It should be by the time this video is uploaded, but who knows? Who knows? It could be a couple hours later. Let's see. Hope you have an amazing rest of your day. I will see you tomorrow. I'm a new daily uploader and yeah, that's all I got. See you later. Peace.